Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Today, the ladder is reset. We're gonna try out some new things in the timeless format. We have an upcoming metagame challenge in about a month's time. Uh, we have metagame challenge for every format except alchemy. Uh, so we're gonna be trying out a couple different things. The first challenge is standard, so I kind of have my deck in mind, but we'll be exploring different decks and explore historic and timeless as we kind of go up there, finding some new deck ideas. One deck I wanted to try out and revisit in timeless was vampires. Uh, so obviously the breakout uh, from the PT was Soren Impervious Bloodlord with Vein Ripper as kind of a two card combo. It was being played in a, a Pioneer in a Rakdos show. Uh, so I have kind of two versions here that I do want to try out. We have a mono black version that's leveraging Dark Ritual into Soren into like Vein Ripper on turn one. Uh, you could also do like the Necropotence plan. Bloodgast is really good in this deck uh, to just kind of keep sacking to Soren to get some value there. Um, so you could kind of use some elements of that. Uh, Preacher of the Schism is another threat that we can look at for some like card advantage there. Uh, the one thing I do want to do is just play a couple of fetches, I think. Uh, blood stains. Reason being, it just gives us another way to kind of hold around that. Uh, we're going to try it out in best of one. I'd like to play best of one for the first couple games just to get a feel for the deck, the numbers, stuff like that. See if like the mana works, stuff of that nature. So I had this mono black version. Uh, depending on how it goes, I also have a Rakdos version that's like a Blood Moon version. Uh, where did you go? Where did you go? Moon Vamps. So a little bit different. Not on the Dark Ritual plan. Uh, not on the Necropotence plan. We have Fable the Mirror Breakers as well as Blood Moon, some Bolts, and Harvesters in here. Uh, so kind of a similar idea, different. I think the black based only is more explosive. Uh, Blood Moon, I, if I play this in best of three, I may keep, like set it up where we have the Blood Moon option. With fetches, it's more than reasonable to kind of go from there uh, and see how that plays out. But we're going to start with this Vampire's List and see how it goes. I, I had started recording a Tempo Blood Moon deck and it was just bad. So we're not going to... We're not going to venture into that range. After two games, like eight minutes into the video, I'm just like, no, no. No lessons learned other than this isn't a good deck. But we'll give this one a shot, see how it plays out, and kind of go from there. Uh, for We go first, we will keep. Just a lot of disruption here, which I like. Okay, so they can thought seize, thought seize. So not leading on Thoughtseize is a bit annoying here. So we'll see what they play here. They have to decide if they want to hit Soren. So this is show and tell. Uh, for folks who usually tune into the metagame breakdowns on the channel here, they're, for the best of three format, we're still not seeing a lot of the new cards. So this is a case of, I went back to the untapped guys, they're looking into it, hopefully get some more stats. I'll try to get that video out as soon as possible. We're seeing the updates in best of one. Maybe should have let on Thoughtseize, but generally speaking, like, shouldn't make too much of a difference. The main phase impulse is interesting. So we'll start with Inquisition here. Oh, wow. Okay. So... That's a thing. I mean, at this point, I think we just do this. Take their last playable card. Ah, uh, you know what, I messed that up. I could have put a counter on it. So a bit of a misplay. I should have done that pre-combat. Okay, they didn't draw show and tell. Okay, so we did hit a land, which is nice. So I can do that.
play the land, and then just get them that way there. So yeah, even if they drew show and tell, they get an Atraxa, but then I can fling it back. Weird hand, but that's why we're playing the discard package. Very weird decision for them to impulse there, knowing that we had the discard in hand. They should have just thought seized my thought seize. I guess at that point they figure, oh, well, we have multiples, but stripping them of like all their playables. Three Atraxas, like at that point, doesn't matter which Atraxa you take, they're going to have it, but they need show and tell for Atraxa. We had enough damage there. They should have taken my Soren or taken my Thoughtseize, depending on the configurations of their hand. Like knowing they had the three Atraxas, you take the, the Soren. Funky yo yo dude. All right. So no vein ripper, but we can go preacher here. So we draw a card here. Since I hit the double discard, I think we do this. I think this is probably dredge, but it could be combo. Okay, so it's show and tell. I still think we take show and tell out of them. Okay, so we got Vein Ripper for the following turn. I think what we do here, we attack in. And then I play, see what we draw, I can play Bloodgast, sack it, and then play the land and get them that way there. So just extra damage. We also have Bowmaster. So that's an interesting one, because they're going to Born to the Winds. We could ping them for one, but I think the Bloodgast line just... Put some under more pressure. Because at this point, they need to have one of these next cards be a show and tell and a land. Okay, they kept it on top, which could be show and tell. Okay, so they're just dead. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Turn one preacher wins games. I'm liking what's uh what's being thrown down here. What do we get? Another questing druid. Still want to hit that vein ripper on turn one. I feel like a lot of decks can't deal with it. Just being like five, five toughness, the ward, the flying, being uh, like higher CMC gets around a lot of the common removal. We go first against Jenganta, which is Zoo. I'm gonna mulligan this hand. I'm gonna keep this hand. Um, so Soren's a good piece here. 
I think we get rid of the Bowmaster. Okay, so they're humans. I can get rid of their one drop. I can get rid of their three drop. I largely don't care about Thalia. I'll get Soren out the turn before it comes down, or I can Fatal Push. I think the Mantis Rider is the scariest. In retrospect, Bowmaster would have been fantastic here. So this is kind of cool, because if they attack in... I get to go Mutavault, and if they don't... I just get to Fatal push the Thalia here. So I love a Vampire here. Bowmaster's equally as good. So this one's an interesting one. Obviously, if we knew we were drawing this, we would have just, like hit this instead. Might have been right to play this lined out because I could have cycled it if we didn't Bowmaster. Come on. Um, they can make it bigger. In case I get something else. Oh my God. Can we like draw something here? I guess that makes it worse because I can't activate on my turn. Come on, <laughs> top deck city. So obviously like this game, just every sequence has just been one off. Like we fatal push it, we draw the bow master, we kind of go from there. Um, okay, fatal push is nice here. So a bit unfortunate because of the ward here. I have to pay for it. I do have the fatal push for next turn. We just drew a lot of lands as well. Like any turn we draw a vampire to cheat into play, we're in a good spot. I 
This one's an interesting one to include in the deck. They don't really have artifacts, I guess, other than the treasure. The One Ring. Friend, that doesn't exist in this deck. Uh, we go to six here. I guess the question is... Take them off that. Yeah, we just... And not draw. Anything in the right order. Okay. But they have Lar Larcenist. So it doesn't matter. Bit of an odd one there. I think like turn one naming Mantis Rider was correct. We just didn't get the right like sequence of things. I think keeping a hand with Soren is correct. Trying to draw into it, we have like a bunch of different vampires. If we drew like even blood gas that game is good, we could have just machine gunned their board. I think that matchup's more than fine. Just need to actually hit your spells. All right, we got Luris. Do I turn one Kalidas? Probably not. I gotta turn two because it's it's fewer cards. Okay, that's like insane. Your go. <laughs> Vein Rippers, these die, I drain them. Lightning Bolt you. Like, I can't tell if we have too many lands, not enough lands. So we'll hit him there. So we'll attack with these two. If they block, I get the extra point of damage in. They trade. I think regardless, we're gonna put the extra point of damage in. Put some basically dead next turn. We'll double block if possible. Okay, if they have three bolts, they get me. We've seen two already out of them. Bolt yourself, monkey. They just die here from the uh, Vein Ripper.
Cool. Uh, turn two, Van Gripper. Getting the job done. So I'm wondering if we don't play the Necropotence version and just go a little bit heavier on Vampires. Um, go up like another Kalidus. Get rid of the Necropotence and then like I like having access to Edict. Like if I look vampires that are like multicolor, I want to keep it mostly to. I think there is like the Convoke Vampire. Like Dusk Legion Zealot's not great. This dies to Bowmaster, otherwise it'd be interesting. Blood Artist isn't really playable unless you're in a combo deck. There's Silver Smoke Ghoul. But it just dies to Bowmaster. That's not really playable. This dies to Bolt. There's this, which again, not great. We could just do, I was thinking of it like Blood Veil Purveyor. It's just a big creature. Uh, similarly, like City Stalker Connoisseur, it's just a way to force discard out of your opponent. Like, I want to come out ahead. Like, the Blood Veil Purveyor is just another big body. We're probably okay in the early game. Like, we have the removal, we have the discard. Um, like, I could play One Ring just as a way, but I don't love the One Ring. Guess we could play this Soren. It makes life slinkers. It provides us card advantage virtually. Cause like this isn't that great, like on its own because we need vampires in play. We're not always guaranteed to have them. And then, like, what do you do? You're not really anything. It's cheaper with Delirium, but we want like big plays. This is another big creature, but it has no evasion, so it doesn't really do much. And then like even um, this one that reanimates, uh, where is it? There's one that reanimated, like four mana. One of the new ones. I don't know. Uh, let's try Soren out and see how that plays out. We'll give this one a shot. Do one more with this. So I could turn to Soren. I have Fatal Push up, wrong Soren, but I think we keep regardless. Chingantha could be in a couple different decks. Probably Zoo. I think I maybe want to play one of the Surveil lines. I could be wrong. So I get hit by Spell Pierce. So I think we do this. I'm pretty sure we're against Zoo. So 
So I want them to tap out because they could have fetched for, like, I don't want to get four spiked and kind of go from there. Yeah, it's still main. So a little punished here, but not the end of the world. They took a land off the top there. I think here... Because I can still play around the force spike. Question here is do I play around the bolt? So either I can make the 2-3. I think we're going to take the card advantage here. That's good. So it's actually good. I want to see how this plays out in like an aggressive matchup. This will also help me get some, some card draw. I have the Blood Ghast combo that I can do. I can Fatal Push if they try to paste something in here. Which they might be inclined to do so. They're in the tanks. So notably no blue mana. Um I think they have the force spike here. This is good, because now... This comes here. Question is... Oh, I don't have the... Oh, I could get it back, so that's fine. I can hit them again. Um, am I making a 2-3? If they have bolts, then it gets rid of... Well, they don't kill either that turn. So I think this requires them to have more threats. So technically the Soren can die to a bolt, but then that means they're not bolting here. So they would need multiple bolts to be able to do something here. And then I also have Takanuma to just rebuy something if needed. They could have Leyline Binding. That's something that could come up. Okay, so they're binding there.
Cool. I don't want that. You gonna cast my Sorn? So they play out Nakadal. This is Tribal Flames. Okay. We're going to do this. Take this out. Do this, get back to. I think I'm willing to trade the Muta Vault potentially off. Okay, so they coddle here. It's not that scary. The last card, Bolts. Sacrifices a non-token. So here they have to decide of keeping my Muta Vault alive. They can't, ah, uh, Bane Ripper would have been so good to keep, cheat that in. Don't quite have lethal. I can hit them for six, 10. Okay, opponent. Today. Okay, ritual doesn't really do much. I think we do want to take Ragavan off. We'll just draw a card. Gained us nine life this game. We'll go Jingantha here. It's down to five. That works. Here's my Vein Ripper. Here's my Bowmaster.
And they're dead. Alright, that was sweet. Alright, this deck did things. Soren was actually pretty impressive there. Just kind of giving us some card advantage, helping us dig. It might still be right on the Necro line, but it might put us at a little bit of odds. We might just want to try to find like some cheaper, maybe something like a Cling to Dust or something a little bit cheaper. We might also want to configure our mana base. I think that they were fine, like the Muta Vaults in some number there. Uh, but we might want some of the Surveil lands just as a fetchable. The alternative as well is we can look at something like Deathrite Shaman. But I think I like this configuration, all things considered. We might not need the Demonic Tutor, but we are kind of a combo deck, so I like that element of it. Um, kind of going from there. But let me know what you think in the comments. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.